Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Sunny Jun. I'm a co-medical director at CCRM San Francisco, and welcome to another episode of CCRM TV. CCRM physicians together are making short educational videos for you on various topics. I'll be talking about understanding ovarian reserve and equality. At this moment, fertility centers throughout the country have been advised to hold off on starting new fertility treatment cycles, including IUIs, IVFs, and embryo transfers, unless urgent, such as with cancer cases. Guidelines from American Society of Reproductive Medicine are being continuously reviewed and updated, and hopefully we will be able to resume treatment in the near future. We do understand that many of you are concerned about your ovarian reserve diminishing as we wait to start. Let's talk about this so we can better understand how we can assess reserve and what we can proactively do to get you optimally ready for your cycle to come once we are able to resume treatment. First of all, let's briefly touch on reproductive aging. Unlike men who can continuously produce sperm, women are born with a limited number of follicles. And on average, women are born with, let's say, approximately one to two million follicles, which are fluid-filled sacs that contain the egg. And then at puberty, they're down to about several hundred thousand. Every month, there's a batch of several hundred follicles dedicated for that month, but usually only one ends up getting that dominant signal, signal from the brain to grow and ovulate, and that the rest of them will die off. So from puberty to menopause, around several hundred eggs will ovulate. And by the time women are in menopause, they will be left with several hundred follicles. As women age, not only does the quantity decrease, but also the quality. And you start to see this decline in the early 30s and then a more steeper decline in the mid to late 30s. However, the rate of decline is difficult to predict. So how do we assess ovarian reserve? There are a few tests that we do check. One is called AMH or anti-malarian hormone, and that's a hormone secreted by these follicles. And it helps estimate the number of follicles in your ovaries. AMH declines as you age, and by the time you're in menopause, AMH can be close to zero. And you do have to understand that AMH levels can vary from lab to lab, and the rate of decline is again difficult to predict. We, we uh, cannot solely rely on AMH alone to assess ovarian reserve. And one thing very important to understand is that AMH does not predict pregnancy outcome. It can only give us an idea of the egg freezing or IVF treatment outcome. And another um, test that we check um, is on cycle day two or three FSH and estradiol levels. FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. And this is a hormone needed to stimulate the follicles to grow in order to mature and is secreted by the brain. And the reason why we check estradiol levels is to make sure that the FSH levels are accurate. We want the FSH levels to ideally be less than 10 but sometimes estradiol levels can be elevated and falsely lower the FSH levels and falsely reassure us that the levels are normal. So we do have to check um, both. It's natural for FSH levels to increase and AMH levels to decrease with age. So it's important to assess these hormone levels against the baseline of your age. The third test that we perform is called an antrophological count, and this is done by a transvaginal ultrasound. And we look at the ultrasound and count the number of potential follicles that we can see. You have many more follicles that we can't visualize, but those are the follicles for that month. And these tests will help us better understand your reserve and how to advise you in terms of treatment, whether it is for fertility preservation or conception. For treatment, the results of the tests will help guide the physicians on how to optimally stimulate your ovaries to retrieve sufficient number of eggs during an egg freezing or IVF cycle. Now let's talk about quality. As for quality, we do know that as women increase in age, the rate of chromosomal abnormality of these eggs do increase. Although we are not able to determine the quality of the eggs individually with our treatments, we are able to assess the quality of the embryos and the rate of chromosomal abnormality via testing of these embryos through a procedure called PGTA, or pre-implantation genetic treatment, a stands for aneuploidy, we're assessing the chromosomal abnormality. This is only possible with IVF treatments and not with IUI cycles. And studies have shown when the embryos are tested, there is an increasing rate of chromosomally abnormal embryos with increasing maternal age. 
However, if we're able to identify the chromosomally normal embryos, the chance of a successful live birth, even in women who are reproductively older, is very good. But the challenge is, in women who have lower reserve due to age, it's harder to obtain that genetically normal embryo due to a lower count and quality of the eggs. So what can we do in the meantime while we're waiting? Although we cannot reverse ovarian aging, studies have shown that maintaining a healthy lifestyle with diet and exercise, fertility supplements, acupuncture may all potentially help optimize um, the outcome of our treatment. CCRM has an ongoing study on acai berry supplements, um, which act as antioxidants and have been shown to help improve egg quality. The initial results have been promising. Fertility supplements have been shown to help if taken at least one to two months prior to starting treatment. And this would be a great time to speak with your individual provider and seek his or her advice regarding the type of supplements and what would be appropriate for you. Even in women who have adequate ovarian reserve, certain supplements may still be beneficial. And therefore it is important to check in with your fertility specialist to get your ovarian reserve assessed during this time so that you can start these supplements and make modifications in your lifestyle to prepare for your future treatment. Now, let's take a deep breath. We understand that for many of you, this is a very stressful and frustrating time. Let's try to focus on how we can optimize your future treatment once we are able to resume treatment. Everyone is doing an amazing job with physical distancing, following CDC guidelines, and sheltering in place that hopefully we'll be able to start sooner than later. To our current patients, we miss you all and can't wait to see you all soon. Please continue to check in with your CCRM physicians regarding updates as recommend recommendations will continue to change. We are here for you, so please feel free to reach out to us with any questions or concerns. On behalf of all CCRM physicians, thank you for your patience and understanding throughout this crisis, and please be safe and healthy.